2025 is already here with the latest generation of GPUs on the way. Sure, NVIDIA's 50 series cards are going to be amazingly powerful with all the fancy ray tracing and AI frame gen technologies, but they are also coming with a big price. As an average middle-aged consumer, money is always tight after having your own family and kids, so I decided to find a competent but cheap replacement that can meet most people's needs regarding casual gaming as well as productivity, in my case AAA single-player games and video editing. And after some research and experimentation, I think I have found the perfect GPU. This is an NVIDIA Tesla M40 12GB GPU, which can be found on eBay for as low as less than $40, including shipping. It also has a 24GB version, but that one is far more expensive, and for most people the excessive amount of VRAM isn't really useful, so I would suggest just getting this one. There are major issues with the Tesla GPUs though. Let me explain. First of all, it doesn't have any port for video output. No HDMI, no DisplayPort, not even VGA. So it requires a CPU with iGPU or another GPU to output the video signal to your monitor. This requirement alone already means that this GPU isn't for everyone. But it gets even worse. Another thing you need to make sure before you decide to purchase it is that your motherboard needs to be able to turn on the above 4G option. Fortunately, most motherboards in the last six or seven years do have this option. My motherboard is an MSI A520M, which was very entry level when I bought it, and it is perfectly fine with the GPU. Thirdly, since the Tesla GPUs are designed for use in data centers, where they are typically installed in servers that have their own cooling systems, these systems provide sufficient airflow to cool the GPUs without the need for individual fans on each card. What it means is that we need to find a cooling solution for it. A simple search on eBay would lead you to various kinds of 3D printed adapters and fans kits which can be sold for as low as $15. Or if you have a little more patience, you can find someone selling their modded GPUs. I got lucky to find this one for $50, but even if you buy the GPU and the fan kit separately, they would cost less than $60 in total. To me for the price, it is still an insane value considering what you get. So what is so good about this cheap card compared to other options at this price point? The simple answer is the VRAM. Typically, if you are paying less than $100 in the second-hand market, you can only get GPUs with much less VRAM, such as the GTX 1650, AMD's RX 6500 or 5500 XT. All these cards are 4GB ones, and they cost quite a bit more than the Tesla M40. These are of course not terrible options if you have a ultra-tight budget, and in terms of gaming they are very capable. Some newer titles are very VRAM demanding, but you don't have to play every single game on the market to have fun, so it is not a big problem to me. So why do I still think that the extra 8GB of VRAM is important here? The answer is DaVinci Resolve. If you have any experience with this piece of software, you would know how much it relies on VRAM, a huge amount of VRAM. In fact, on Puget Systems website, it is stated that even for a HD timeline, 8 gigabytes of VRAM is the minimum requirement. In my experience, 4 gigabytes is doable for simple edits, but once you need to put on some text effects or try to use some GPU intensive features such as auto-generating subtitles or Magic Mask, you would be sure to have problems. The ugly part of using DaVinci Resolve with limited VRAM is that it is not going to slow down and take its time to finish the work later. It simply would refuse to run at all. So if you think you are a patient person and your patience can solve any problem, well, at least not this one. Normally I only edit in HD as almost none of my clients specifically states that they want me to deliver in 4K, but that doesn't mean that I am only dealing with HD footage. In fact, 4K files are extremely common these days, and as a result, unless you are willing to make proxies for every project, you would definitely want more VRAM, the more the better. To me, I have found that the sweet spot is 12 gigabytes. I had an RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and never had any issues. So seeing this GPU selling for only $50 and has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I have to try it out.
Another reason why I'm so interested in this particular GPU is because I am running DaVinci Resolve in Linux, and this card being from Nvidia makes it so much more attractive to me. If you have watched my last video, you would know that AMD doesn't play alone with DaVinci Resolve in Linux, at least in my personal experience. A more recent and powerful AMD GPU may be different, but we are talking about budget options here, and from what I learned, the older AMD GPUs are no longer supported by ROCM already, which is a must for AMD GPUs to work properly in DaVinci Resolve. So you would need at least a 6000 series or later models to get decent performance in DaVinci Resolve, Otherwise, you are stuck with the slow and unstable Rusty CL option. I am not going to further this topic here though, just keep in mind that an older AMD GPU may be the worst choice for DaVinci Resolve in Linux. What's even worse for AMD is that if you are using AMD GPUs in DaVinci Resolve in Linux, you won't be able to export H.264 or H.265 files directly in the delivery tab. There is a plugin from the wonderful people in Blackmagic's forum, but it is only using CPU to render. With NVIDIA though, you can utilize their hardware encoder to encode H.264 or H.265 files in Resolve Linux. It definitely makes my life a little bit easier, especially when I am exporting a big project. But what about the performance of this ancient GPU? I need to mention that this very inexpensive card has 3072 CUDA cores. CUDA cores are very essential in DaVinci Resolve. They are used to speed up video decoding, color grading, as well as fusion effects. So basically everything. The number 3072 CUDA cores is the same as that of a GTX Titan X, slightly more than a GTX 1080, and less than a 1080 Ti. At this price point, this is almost too good to be true, to be honest. In real life usage, I can say it performs really well. I don't know how to benchmark a GPU in DaVinci Resolve, so I found this standard candle UHD rocket science on the Lift Gamma Gain forum, and I have interesting results. With one noise reduction node, I am getting 30 FPS playback. For reference, I ran the same test on an M1 MacBook Air and the number was 9 FPS, so it is an over 3 times performance gain. Actually, the number far exceeds my expectation, so I decided to buy another one for my laptop to be used as an eGPU. I put this one into my dusty Asus XG Station eGPU case and it makes my Lenovo ThinkBook much, much more powerful when editing videos for very little money. With the help of the massive VRAM, I also no longer have any stability issue with DaVinci Resolve. Previously, when I used the Magic Mask function in Fusion page, there would be occasional crashes due to the lack of VRAM allocated to the iGPU on my laptop, but this eGPU solution perfectly solves the problem. On the desktop PC, now I can easily put multiple 4K 60 footage on the timeline, or get real-time playback even there are two or three tracks of Fusion text effects. So far I have zero complaints about this $50 GPU when it comes to video editing, considering there are millions of people who are satisfied with their M1 Max for even 4K editing. From what I learned on the Lift Gamma Gain forum, the performance number is only slightly lower than the latest M4 Pro. For $50 this is absolutely amazing. Regarding gaming, it is another story, especially if you are running it on Linux. As you may know, older Nvidia cards suffer huge performance penalties when running modern games in Linux. Keep in mind though, this is only true for DX12 games. DX11 titles are totally fine. For example, I ran The Witcher 3 in DX11 mode and was getting around 50 FPS in 1440p high settings. Of course, I need to turn off the Nvidia Hairworks option but I'm getting the exact same performance in Windows. The game looks and plays beautifully, but for DX12 games, the performance loss is just too much to deal with. In Cyberpunk 2077, I can only get 30-ish FPS in Linux, while the number is 50 in Windows with the same settings. In Black Myth Wukong, the most demanding game in my Steam library, I had to turn on frame gen to match the frame rate in Windows. In general, the performance loss is like 50%. If you are a Windows user though, it is nothing but good news since it can handle most games at 1080p and even some titles in 1440p. Cyberpunk 2077 with hardware, unboxed performance settings runs at around 50 FPS at 1080p natively and if you turn on FSR to quality mode, you can easily get above 60 FPS. My favorite way to play it though is to set FSR to balance and resolution at 1440p. I get much better looking images and around 50 FPS most of the time. To me, this is very playable. Black Myth Wukong gets similar results as well. I play at 1440p with mostly low settings and TSR at 50% render. The frame rate is around 50. If you don't mind turning on frame gen, you can even get above 70. But to me, it kills my last bit of hope of winning any boss fight due to the added latency. 
It's not always bad news for Linux users, though. One of the best games that came out in 2024, Metaphor Refantatio, is surprisingly a DX11 title, so even in Linux we can expect a fully smooth experience at 1440p high settings. Red Dead Redemption 2, which offers native Vulkan API other than DX12, also runs well with this GPU in Linux. With Digital Foundry's Xbox settings, I was getting 60 FPS at 1080p and 45 FPS at 1440p. Turning on FSR at 1440p gives me a 60 FPS experience at the cost of very slight sharpness reduction. This is overall a very pleasant result to me. I don't have a huge game library to test, but I think you get the idea of the performance already. Again, considering the price, it's just amazing in my opinion. If you are like me, never care much about gaming at the highest settings, don't need to play every latest big game, you will be very happy with this GPU. Before I end this video, I need to stress that this GPU is not plug and play, well at least not in Windows. In Linux, getting the GPU to work is as easy as it can get. You just install the latest NVIDIA driver provided by your distro and reboot. Done. In NVIDIA's setting app, you can also change the prime profile to force the whole desktop rendering using the NVIDIA GPU instead of the iGPU, but I found that there is actually no performance gain from it. Running most games from Steam would automatically choose the more powerful GPU, but in rare cases you need to put in the offload commands in launch option. In Windows though, there is one extra step other than simply installing the driver from the official website. You need to switch from TCC mode to WDDM mode for the GPU to be able to run games. I will link the tutorial in the description section if you are interested. It only takes like 30 seconds to do so, don't be scared. I know that budget GPUs are never a hot topic on YouTube because most YouTube channels are very focusing on latest technologies and I totally understand since it is the only way to make connection to the manufacturers to make money from them. But to an average consumer, what's more important is to understand your true needs and make purchase decisions accordingly. This GPU is of course not for 99% of the people out there looking for a graphics card. It has so many limitations and doesn't come with any new technologies, but it just fits my needs. I can edit videos with it without worrying any crash in DaVinci Resolve. I can play every game I own at a reasonable frame rate. The best part for sure is that it costs so little it just makes me smile when using it. How do you think of this GPU? Do you have a better recommendation at this price point? I would love to know that and try them out in the future.